as a person. And I don't wish anything bad on you. I don't know if this is possible, but can, can I give her a hug, please? Please? Yes. It was an extraordinary moment of grief and forgiveness. Brant Jean, the brother of Botham, uh, Botham Jean, hugging Amber Geiger, the police officer who shot and killed his brother. Welcome to Full Circle. I'm Anderson Cooper. That embrace has sparked an outpouring of love and support for the Jean family. The sentence for Amber Geiger, along with what the judge in the case did after that embrace, has created equal parts controversy. Joining me right now is um, Botham Jean's mother, Allison, along with her attorney, uh, Lee Merritt. Uh, I appreciate both of you being with us. Uh, Mrs. Jean, I'm, I'm so sorry for, for your loss and for what you've had to go through uh, this past year. Um, first of all, how are you holding up in, in the wake of all this? Good afternoon, Anderson. And <clears throat> I'm doing well. I'm doing fine. I woke up today and I saw it as a new day because I looked forward to the trial. The trial for me symbolized a major milestone throughout a journey that has been very challenging for the last year. So today is a new day and I embrace it with new possibilities. When, when you saw uh, your son, uh, Brandt, embrace uh, Amber Geiger, offering his love and, and forgiveness in, in the court in that way, did you know he was going to do that? And I, I'm wondering what, what, what went through your mind? Yeah, I didn't, know what, I didn't know he was going to do that. He insisted that he wanted to do the victim impact statement. And... His dad and I decided to just let him do it because Brandt has been very closed ever since Botham's death. He <clears throat> spoke very little, so I saw it as an opportunity to express himself. I didn't know what he was going to say, so I was very shocked when he did that. I'm wondering... Uh what what do you think? It, I mean, it says. I think it says uh, uh, tremendous things about uh, about about your son and about your family and the way you raised uh, your your children. Um, to you, how do you see what he did? Is it is it something that well, did it? You, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, well, my all my children were brought up in the church. We are Christians. We are people of faith. All the principles that we practice are principles of love, forgiveness, for honesty. And Brandt just demonstrated to the world, I would say, all the teachings that he's had from the time he's been born. Because we have never been, we have never taught our children to hate or to do harm to anyone. So I found that he took tremendous courage to display what he did to his brother's killer um, and in the way that he did it. So it's from the teachings that he's had. Um, I can't imagine what attending this trial ha has been like uh, in, the, in the face of the things that have come out about the Dallas Police Department. I want to talk to you about that because you, you've, you've sent a message to them and to the people of Dallas about what needs to change. But first, I'm just wondering what you feel about the, the sentencing um, for the former police officer, Amber Geiger. She faced up to life in prison. She got a sentence of 10 years. She'll be eligible for parole in five. And there were protests, obviously, after that sentencing. I'm wondering what, what your reaction was. Well, first of all, I looked forward to a conviction, and she got it, a conviction of murder, and that's what she got. The sentence of 10 years, I respect the jury's decision. My son was much more valuable than 10 years, but there's nothing that I could do about it. I think it sends a message to America how 
people are treated, how victims are treated. But more so, I think in making America a better place, there must be some reform of the various systems that we saw coming out of the trial. We saw the corruption coming out of the Dallas Police Department, the testimony of the Texas Ranger, and um, the, the, the entire city. So in moving forward, and that's really my goal to move forward, there must be some serious change. And I think the people of Dallas need to look into it and pay greater attention and see that that city, whatever is happening around, is reformed. And Lee, if you could just talk a little bit about some of the things that came out in this uh, trial in terms of the activities of uh, of some of, the, some of the law enforcement personnel, because now the Dallas police, the head of it has come forward and said, you know, they're launching an investigation that, that they are concerned about uh, some of the testimony that, that emerged. Well, what we saw on the trial of Amber Geiger is really what, if you've been paying attention, you expect to see. You expect to see law enforcement treated differently than other criminal suspects. And from the moment that Amber Geiger went into Botham Jean's home, and pulled that trigger. She was treated. She was treated differently. Uh, she was not put in handcuffs at any time on September 6th of 2018. Uh, there was a man in his apartment uh, with a chest wound. She admitted she pulled the trigger. That's enough for probable cause. She should have been placed under arrest. She didn't. She didn't get handcuffs. Instead, she got hugs and handshakes from the police officer association president Mike Mata, uh, her partner. Uh, who was she she was involved in an appropriate relationship with uh, was sending text messages back and forth with her during the time that this incident was happening while she was making that impassioned 911 call she was texting her partner those texts were then subsequently deleted and this is following a murder so that's now destruction of evidence on both parts uh, you had uh, leadership within the Dallas Police Department instructing us uh, subordinates to cut off body camera footage, to cut off dash cam footage, and begin destroying evidence. And that was just how this investigation started. Uh, and so there was a long line of corruption after the shooting. And we also believe that poor policy and poor training had a lot to do with why Amber Geiger felt the need to use deadly force in a situation that even if what was going on in her mind were true, even if she had stumbled upon someone in her apartment, she didn't. She wasn't authorized to use deadly force. Her training should have told her to de-escalate, to call for backup. Uh, but instead, she did what we have seen officers in Dallas do over and over again, which is immediately escalated to a deadly force situation, only to discover that she had made a mistake. Hmm. Uh, the uh, another moment yesterday that that certainly drew the attention of uh, protesters and 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 uh, outraged by by some organizations was when the judge in the case. Um, also hugged uh, the woman who was convicted of murdering your son. And I'm wondering if you thought that was appropriate, because she did this after your son uh, had hugged her. And, I, and I'm going to hop, hop in there. Judge Tammy Kemp uh, presided over that entire trial, and she made some controversial calls, for both for the defense and for the prosecution. For example, she told the defense that most of their expert testimony, including the testimony of uh, the Ranger uh, David Armstrong could not go before the jury. Now, that, that's likely something that will come up on appeal. And it would have been very detrimental testimony for the prosecution's team. Uh, and so at that point, people who were in favor of an acquittal were saying that she was slanted in favor of the family. And then she said that certain very important jury instructions will go back to the jury. Uh, specifically the Castle Doctrine, that Amber Geiger was entitled to the Castle Doctrine, which is designed to give homeowners wide latitude in the use of deadly force when protecting their home. Of course, the prosecution argued vigorously that she shouldn't be let, letting in the Castle Doctrine because she wasn't in her castle. And then finally, you had this moment. I don't think that had anything to do with jurisprudence. I think it had everything to, to do with her being a human in that moment, this young man had shown uh, amazing strength and character in extending love and forgiveness to Amber Geiger. I think she got caught up in the moment and she did something that I, 
I think was a mistake in this regard. Uh, people who have been convicted of a crime shouldn't be touched by anyone. It's a safety issue. Brent should not have been allowed to touch her under the rules, certainly not hug her. The judge probably shouldn't have repeated that behavior. But we had uh, transcended the moment at that time. I was present in the courtroom. And it, 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 I don't think it was this, again, it was a jurisprudence thing. This was just her being a human, being a Christian, and feeling what was going on in the moment. Mm. Mrs. John, you, I saw afterward, you, you offered um, hope, essentially, for Amber Geiger, that, that the 10 years that she was sentenced gives her time to, to reflect and, and to change. Do you think that is possible? Is, is change, is change possible? Well, if, she re if she's really remorseful of what she did and she truly wants to come back into society, I think that's what the 10 years would offer her because it's my understanding that she will be placed in solitary confinement and be given only one hour of recreation. So for 23 hours, she will be sitting in a cell without seeing the sunlight. And during that time, I think she can do nothing better but to reflect on what she did. Her haste to pull the trigger and to do it intentionally, like she said in court, is really something that she needs to reflect on. So yeah. I believe the 10 years is going to be 10 solid years where she can reflect. And if she really wants to get back into mainstream society, she'll have to come out as a changed person and, and a positively changed person. And Mrs. Jean, what, what do you want people to know about, um, about Botham, what, about your son? Botham was a sweet young man. Botham, I, I always say I don't like to speak about him because I'm already coming from a position of bias. <laughs> but Botham loved mankind. He loved humanity. He was a forgiving person. And what Brandt demonstrated yesterday is what I believe both of them would have done. I'll be honest, I, when I saw Brandt up there and what he was saying, I really felt both of them's presence in the room. Mm. And I think Brandt was heavily influenced by his older brother and did just what he felt both of them would have done. So what we've seen in both of them is one who reached out to the underprivileged, to the underserved, one who spoke for the voiceless. He was very concerned about the vulnerable, about elderly people in society, about delinquent children, about orphans. And so we have converted the pain that we've suffered into the Botham Je Foundation, continuing his legacy and reaching out to people who, are, who need us the most. So on Sunday, we launched the foundation. We had a red tie launch of the, of the foundation right here in Dallas. And we hope to continue to reach out to persons who are impacted by police brutality and bring about racial unity and speak out on gun control. So what Brand did yesterday was really the first step to that racial healing that is required in our society. Is there a, a web address that people can go to for the Botham Jean Foundation? Yes, it's BothamJeanFoundation.org. There is a donation link. We invite donations from everyone who wants to contribute. And because of the well, St. Lucian accent, <laughs> I'm going to say it's <coughs> BothamJeanFoundation.org, B-O-T-H-M-J-E-A-N, Foundation.org. Uh, well, uh, I wish I had your accent. I love your accent. It's, uh, it's lovely. Um, yeah. Uh, Mrs. Jean, I'm, I'm sorry we're meeting under these circumstances, and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for all you've been through and, and all you're going to go through in the loss that, that continues. So um, I just wish you the best and peace, and thank you for your strength and for what you're doing, and Lee Merritt as well. Thank you very much. Thank Anderson, thank for, thank thanks you. for having us on. All right. Take care. I'm going to move on to uh, an extraordinary family um, and an extraordinary time in court that uh, we witnessed yesterday. I want to move on to the goods. I'm going to show you one story that hopefully leaves you feeling good. The 
power of music ruled the internet when video of a homeless woman singing an Italian opera in a Los Angeles subway station went viral. Listen. Los Angeles Police Department posted the footage after an officer spotted that woman, uh, Emily Zamorka is her name, giving her soulful subway performance. Emily, who you can see there balancing her belongings in both hands, became apprehensive when the officer first approached. And all of a sudden I see the police officer and I kind of got scared because I thought he's probably going to, oh, oh, I'm going to be in trouble for doing this. And he had a big smile on his face. The officer's admiration of Emily's beautiful voice has since been shared worldwide. She's not only gained internet attention, but many have expressed offers to help her get back on her feet. And I will be so grateful to anyone who is trying to help me to, um, to get off of the streets and to have my own place. Well, uh, there's news today that a uh, record deal could be in the works for the woman dubbed the Subway Soprano. Emily says she's overwhelmed with gratitude, and last night she was thrilled to have a chance to hug the officer behind the camera. When her affiliate caught up with her, Emily generously agreed to an encore, so I want her to have the last note here on the goods. And that does it for Full Circle. We wish her the best. We'll be back at 5 p.m. Eastern Time tomorrow. And remember, you can watch the show anytime by going to CNN.com slash Full Circle. Until then, tune to AC360 on CNN, 8 p.m. The first official to testify in the whistleblower charges was on Capitol Hill today. He appeared before three committees. I'll speak with a congressman from one of those committees and get his reaction. I'll see you then.